Hi, this is Shadi. Today I have a not so good story about this young man you see here in front of you. His name is Daisuke Yanakihara. So, sumo is a martial art that is somewhat divine. You see a lot of people commit to this craft, so to speak, by being hermits, living in a special place with dormitory and all they do is just train, compete, and just commit every aspect of their life to sumo. And of course, behind the scenes and behind the curtains, there's um, quite a lot of not so good uh, things. And today it's this uh, story. So the link will be in the description below. It is in French. However, uh, you can easily translate nowadays. You can just click on the language option. So, uh, Daisuke Yanagihara uh, actually started sumo 10 years ago he joined the uh, stable and lived there and he finally comes out uh, and speaks of the horrors that he had experienced there he says that it is a type of treatment that does not belong to this age so he speaks of things like the conditions which is the first one being that he had uh, a duty towards other wrestlers that is to massage them and take care of them physically so uh, this alone reduced his sleep quality to three sometimes four hours a night and with hectic training this showed on him and you have to take in consideration that he was gaining weight all this time so barely sleeping overloading his uh, physique and also uh, gaining weight from excess calories his heart says that he became it became very weak and he was uh, in need of a surgery and even had medical clearance but his teacher said to him just put on socks and uh, you should be fine other things were the punishments that uh, happened so um, you have the physical punishments he says heavy physical punishment so we both know that means it's a lot of beating and this is not a surprise because uh, in japan many would tell me that after i lost this competition my teacher took me to the side uh, he beat me up uh, another judoka said the same thing l later regarding when they were competing and they were almost you know trying to touch high level and they would lose lose for their team so they would be beaten up or slapped across the face there's all sorts of stories i've heard a few anecdotes myself from them when i lived there so um, this is not a surprise that it could happen in something as isolated as the uh, sumo stable so imagine uh, and they were telling me they were in middle school or they were early high school so i mean i imagine many of you listening have kids so just imagine someone beating your kids because they lost and they are their trainer i I'm pretty sure you'd be furious so another thing that he would get punished for is uh, eating dirt so one of the punishments was eating dirt or uh, straight up salt and also you had um, frozen meat that was years old and they would also force him to eat it um, there is just uh, also the loss of contact with his family Many of the of people actually reported that, not just him. So, um, like I said, so he almost lost his life. He almost died of heart failure because of overworking uh, and also overeating. So this idea that their type of fat is not uh, visceral, is subcutaneous. So uh, they're actually very healthy. That's not true. Overweight is overweight. The, the heart still has to pump blood to all the body so regardless so being less heavy is always good obviously not too light but i think you know what i mean so um he did everyone knows that in order to be at least healthy you should get good sleep so he was overworked and overtraining and being punished in a way that's very inhumane the one thing that stood out to me was even if they bring something as simple as like a bottle of juice and put it in the fridge for them from the outside they would actually get punished for it by paying the trainer so like financial punishments and uh, it's it's really ridiculous up to the smallest point of their 
life it was controlled in a sense and uh, but on the outside you, you see how sumo it is praised and it is considered like a religious duty almost and he came out with this saying that even till this day i cannot hate uh, my coach so it's it's truly sad so you listen to a lot of stories not just in sumo or judo or wrestling or whatever there's just all sorts of stories that happen um, to a lot of people not just in japan but also in many countries and there's a distinction between being pushed beyond your limits and being pushed to perform more and having good discipline and being physically and ment mentally emotionally uh, abused there, there's quite the distinction someone being tough on you it's not always a good thing you should you should be able to distinguish this and um, with a lot of faulty parenting a lot of people grow up to not being able to distinguish the two so you should be very careful of this uh, I'll tell you a little story so 10 years ago I started Aikido and um, I had this uh, trainer so at first I I was in a paying club I could not afford it all I did was study and later on they told me in, in campus there is free free classes just come and join but he's really tough and uh you know you have to be very present trained very serious he's very tough i i was down for it because that's what i always wanted in life was to train and and now i get to do it for free and it was i believe four or five days a week there was also taekwondo but i wanted something the closest to judo which was my childhood dream so to speak and uh, i started there and um i didn't feel like he he uh he liked me at first which was fine i wasn't there to make friends i was there to train and with time his attitude towards me got more and more aggressive the slightest thing i would get yelled at in front of everyone and i would be talked down and uh humiliated almost no not almost definitely humiliated and at first i thought you know when you're when you, you have zero character and you're working on it all by yourself, at first you think it's your fault. But um, uh, later on, you just have to say like, hey, these are my boundaries and uh, that person is just an awful person. But when you have no character, you think everything is your fault. But granted, uh, one time I remember I was, uh, I came to training a bit early and uh, I heard some some noise and laughter from the office that was right next to the mats and uh, I figured I would put down my bag and come in and say hello to whoever it was because I heard some familiar voices and uh, and then as I was you know, two or three steps just from entering the the office I hear I hear my name and they're talking about me and laughing and uh, how I just get yelled at and uh, and over the slightest thing almost like he was proud of it and he was just doing it for fun uh doing it in front of the whole class and uh, i remember being fuming mad um the next time he did it i just said i remember just putting on my uh my suri or slippers and i just walked out and uh i remember texting him th that night uh either you, you you have some respect for yourself or you know i'm not coming back here this is no, this is dumb i'll just go join another club you have no right i'm the only one you actually do this to I, something like that i remember it was years ago then uh he says come let's talk uh you know i want to push you hard but you know the 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 famous bully speech you i want to push you harder and um years later and that is years later i get a text i i'm i moved to another city i'm 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 doing my master's degree. I was very happy. I was just living a different life, and I get a I get a text, and uh, he said he asked me if I, he can call me. He calls me, and uh, he started to apologize. He says, you know, these, these things years ago. It's uh, I hope you can forgive me. And uh, but uh, honestly, I really appreciated it. I I figured that he he took some time. He he actually reflected, and years later a lot of people probably reflect and but nobody has the guts to actually come out and say you know i'm sorry i i i was a terrible person but honestly i i really appreciated the courage to actually do this now is it uh 100 forgiven 
I, I, I don't train under that person anymore. I got my black belt under Tissier. I'm, I, <laughs> but still, it, it was nice to, that he actually reflected and did this. But, uh, you know, everything else was just absolutely terrible. I almost quit training, to be honest, but uh, I'm glad I didn't. So um, if you have anything to add, let me know. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.